scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Haven't drawn our minds to the fact that if believers are not trained, they will not excel as far as this faith adventure is concerned. I want to talk about three areas and three things that I truly believe a kingdom secret that can turn anyone for that matter to become a giant in the spirit number one the power of a systemic prayer life please write it down the power of a systemic prayer life please underline the word systemic many people teach on prayer many people pray many people talk about prayer but many believers have not been able to draw the richness that is captured in the prayer ministry largely because their prayer life is not systemic in acts chapter 3 and verse 1 we are considering the power of a systemic prayer life acts chapter 3 and verse 1 let's read together ready one to read now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer somebody say the hour of prayer the hour of prayer there was a time dedicated it became a ritual it became habitual they even named it the hour of prayer you see the power of prayer it's not just in the activity alone but the consistency the consistency of that fellowship now i've taught you that prayer achieves many things in the life of the believer let me quickly do a recap for you there are four four things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer according to scripture number one prayer is a channel for fellowship and transformation fellowship and transformation I think that is Luke 29 did I get that right and verse 9 or thereabout the Bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering so prayer was given primarily as a tool for fellowship that culminates to our transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you christ-like in experience he says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you so that is the first biblical assignment of prayer as a tool for fellowship and transformation number two prayer is a tool or a platform to make petitions and obtain requests prayer is a platform to make petitions and obtain requests the Bible says that should be Matthew chapter 11 I believe and verse 24 Jesus was teaching on the subject of faith and then he veers off to talk about prayer Mark is it Mark help me Mark Mark 11 24 he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray did I get that right believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have them so there is a prayer request called what things soever no matter what it is it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them hallelujah 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 we read it earlier on it says to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to God so prayer is a platform for making petitions and obtaining requests number three prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation God is not the only person you talk to when you pray in prayer you can talk to things in prayer you can talk to spirits you are given the liberty to use the platform of prayer and create possibilities in your life are we together even God who call it the things that be not as though they were you can create spiritual possibilities you can make decrees it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one who made the decree thou shalt decree a thing your Bible says where the word of a king is there is power so prayer is a platform that allows you to create possibilities program possibilities in your life finally prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession warfare establishing the victory of Christ over your life and warding of the forces, the arsenals of darkness that continue to fight the speakings of God over your life. These are, among others, I believe, the four biblical assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. But you see, your prayer life will not be rich until it is systemic in the case of the apostles they had the hour of prayer and the Bible calls it the ninth hour in the life of Jesus we find his prayer life the Bible gives us a picture of his prayer life in Mark chapter 1 from verse 34 look his busy schedules and see how he was able to carve out a systemic approach to his prayer life mark 1 let's begin our reading from verse 34 mark 1 34 help us media the bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils this is from his crusade now he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 we're reading to 37 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed this was a a, a habitual practice of jesus because his day was full of activities you need to picture the life of Jesus. Everybody thronging upon him, moving from city to city. And he did not have that time to pray in the afternoon. But early in the morning, it was a habit. The apostles also started learning it. The Bible says, Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Jesus was not just prayerful. He was systemic with his prayer. Look up please. Many believers are not able to excel and enjoy the wealth and the blessings that come with the prayer ministry because we have not created a systematized approach to prayer we largely freelance our prayer or motivated by the reality of a situation that challenges you then you may now give some attention are we together Believers were never designed to pray only during emergencies. Believers were never designed to pray only during needs. Believers were never designed to pray only when you have a program. The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, he says to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Let's assume that you are a student in any of the high institutions of learning here. Because of the nature of your life and the face of life that you are in, you may have a bit of luxury of time because your focus will largely be 
school work and then you have the luxury of time and it is possible to pray at any time once you are not having your lectures you may have fellowship or just your personal time but now fast forward imagine that that same student now becomes a worker say in an oil and gas company you use that student template they will first suck you out of the work are we together now and when they throw you away both your spiritual life and your means your stream of income will both dry up you have to reinvent a system that now suits the current context of your life this is the problem with many believers you had the luxury say for instance you were not married at that point you had the luxury you could lock up yourself for three days you didn't need to obtain permission from any man as a woman you can lock yourself and pray now you are married you are a wife probably a mother you have other responsibilities that luxury of freelancing your prayer life is no longer there because being prayerful would not be an excuse for failing in your family life are we together so you have to now create a system it takes intelligence to pray effectively not just spirituality that intelligence component is where believers have thrown it away we just have a blind zeal there needs to be intelligence when you study your life and you find out the way that God works with you if you are a leader and you have a lot of commitment towards people you would want to maximize your night times you want to maximize your mornings in principle I have found the night times to be the best for me for various reasons because it affords you a greater sense of focus are we together now there are moments where you can take dedicated times out maybe a whole day but generally speaking there are certain levels of growth i'm saying this sincerely ask any great leader they will tell you the convenience of prayer right now for them was not the way it used to be years ago if you are to be honest because of the responsibilities that have come upon that person you can be praying and someone comes to disturb you now you are living in the same house with five of your relatives and while you are praying the one who is not born again is enjoying himself and playing one song and just when you want to position your your heart and you are in the same house you can't drive them remember you are trusting god for the salvation of that person are we together or while you are trusting god to increase you now you live in a house where you are a christian and you are surrounded say by non-christians and certain liberty of expression that you may have you understand you can shout you can roll you can do everything now you are limited in many ways listen believers you will not grow spiritually and you will not be rich in your prayer life until you study your life and in partnership with the Holy Spirit design an effective template that insists that you do not compromise on prayer regardless your schedule because the devil is a master at giving you a justification i'm busy you know the way my life is and two days becomes one week becomes one year and before you know it you will simply be admiring the days when you used to be prayerful and there are consequences according to scripture when believers do not invest time to pray you have bought the potential for quality fellowship with the spirit of god and then all of these things that i mentioned will no longer be found in your life is someone learning you want to gain mastery in training any believer you have to train them to understand the power of a systemic or systematized prayer life there are people who come to pray and you know they say a lot of childish things plus Jesus minus Satan and that's the end of it that's the prayer or they say what we know to be the Lord's prayer as a pastor of a ministry that's your entire prayer life no you can't walk that way are we together no wonder the life that should emanate as we speak as we preach and as we lead is not there and you find out that there's a lot of energy that is being dissipated but the life component that is ignited through a rich prayer life is not there for instance you can hear a preacher preach 
preach sincerely and what he's saying is not a lie except that your spirit bears witness that there is information but there is no life and life there does not mean flying up and down there is there is the strength let me tell you a healthy secret place cannot be hidden no it's not about the huskiness of your voice it's not about oratory there is a signature of life that is upon your speakings you cannot pretend a healthy prayer life no you cannot act and pretend a healthy prayer life believers hear me zaria hear me if you do not understand the power of prayer you will give evil the right and the credence to reign over territories when men do not know how to pray and subdue territorial powers we are talking of advanced levels of prayer where it's not just needs you are standing like a watchman over a territory and insisting allowing the things that must happen within a territory or disallowing it by the authority that you have are we together yes sir there are controlling spirits across territories that manipulate the thinking of people causing them to act in certain ways that are antichrist it is the responsibility of the believer within that territory did the bible not say in matthew chapter 5 jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16 he says you are the light you are the light of zaria believers hear me he says you are the salt of the earth the, the assignment of the salt is twofold one to add taste or value number two to preserve you are not salt if you are not contributing towards your prayer life in the name of Jesus we stand here as salt darkness will not reign over Zaria it's not just when you gather as a prayer group it's not just when you gather here in Koinonia it must become a lifestyle to make your contribution as far as sanitizing the territory to make the purposes of God find a free course it says I Paul desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us if satan can hinder men he can hinder things things like many manifestations of favor coming to you can be hindered is someone learning i made up my mind that my environment will always remain an environment of pro advancement an environment that makes it conducive for the purposes of god to find expression Believers, hear me. In the name of Jesus, you must have a systematized prayer life. As a father over your family, you must have a systematized prayer life. You see, our parents used to practice something called morning devotion. I know that that may not really be enough to give you a robust spiritual life, but it was better than nothing. Even though it was just five, ten minutes of just sharing briefly, it was consistent and many of us the bank of spiritual knowledge that we have came from that experience you would find out that they just spent 10 minutes in a day in truth i will tell you you will need more than that if you want to attain stature in the spirit but it is still better than nothing and don't forget that they were working with the limit of the knowledge they had so god would vet them based on the knowledge available for them they made the most they made sure that every month they bought you devotional remember or every year there were others that were yearly there were others that were monthly they insisted whether you liked it or not and remember sometimes you will not do it for two weeks then you will repent like i used to do and then cover all the ones that you didn't do then backslide again hmm. but now you must get to a point where you have the prayer ministry as a revelation listen prayer is not all about power prayer is about negotiating with the realm of the spirit to manifest possibilities it's not just all about anointing uh -uh. Are we together do not allow the devil to destroy your loved ones under your watch do not allow the devil to to invade a territory under your watch do not allow yourself to be bankrupt listen in the name of jesus may it never happen that the time will come in zaria where there is no longer evangelism people are not being saved people are not being healed people are not being delivered that the churches are now facing all kinds of pain persecution no increase in membership may it never happen under our watch in the name of jesus it is our responsibility 
to stand and to pray it says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore hallelujah to pray we are preparing for a UK conference right now and there is prayer happening every day every day non-stop until the conference time because taking a flight and going there is not what you need God is sending you as an agent of revival there are age-long spirits that predated even your arrival you're not just going to stand there and speak English no the Bible says every time you see men there are two laws working in them number one is the law of sin and death and the assignment is to work in partnership that there is a superimposition the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus it will take more than good English it will take more than a good sermon it says I when I came to you I didn't come with the excellency of speech you want to see nations submit to the power of God you want to see the manifestation of the power of God sweep nations we are not just talking about car, having a car and a house and personal needs we are talking of a time where by reason of your alignment God can trust you with the destinies of a generation hallelujah the Bible shows us three levels of trust in the Bible. The least level of trust that God can accord a man is to trust you with things. Giving you things is the least level of trust in the spirit. Things like money, things like access to things is the least level of trust. The second level of trust is trust over destinies. God can give you the trust and make you a custodian he can trust you with destinies men nations the highest level of trust as revealed from scripture that god can accord a man is to trust you with his program literally he puts you to spearhead his agenda that god will say for the next 10 years this is what i want to do in zaria and i'm putting you in charge of that program i hope someone is learning so celebrating that you have access to things is wonderful but i'm telling you that does not weigh much in the spirit oh i have money i have a good job thank god for that but spiritually speaking mm -mm. you find this in matthew chapter 25 and there are other synoptic accounts we're not going there for the sake of time you find a situation where the first thing he gave them was things talent when they were faithful he now made them head over nations that was the reward they got are we together yes so Jesus looks at his disciples and says I'm sending you as witnesses over Jerusalem Judea but among all of them there were a few people who were trusted with his program salvation to the Gentiles was given to one man salvation to it was not given to a group in as much as all of them were sent as witnesses when you mention Paul when you mention John when you mention Peter these were men who were trusted with programs not just things Jesus said I have many things to tell you but he cannot bear them now the many things he wanted to say was what Paul now brought if Paul was not there we would not have an opportunity to hear the many other things Jesus wanted to say do you know what it means to read the Bible without Paul's contribution number one you will not understand redemption reading the gospels it will take the Pauline epistles to bring perspective because as at the time Jesus was dying they had not received the Holy Spirit in them so their spiritual understanding was still there it was Paul by the Spirit that began to give a sound exegesis of everything that happened the whole book of Ephesians six chapters it was Paul that began to tell us that we were raised up with Christ not even Jesus preached it Remember what I taught you. Three levels of trust. Things, destinies, God's program. And in every territory, God has a program. That's why people come to territories and leave. Every, please listen, this is a very prophetic message. There is something God is doing in Zaria now that he did not do 10 years ago. But that, that program can be aborted 
until he finds men that move beyond the realm of being trusted with things to be trusted with destinies and to be trusted with his program every believer who grows holistically you will see these three phases of trust you will start seeing certain manifestations things are working a car is coming this and that and sometimes we get distracted and we feel that's the highest level no there are higher levels of ranking and authority in the spirit where God now trusts you with certain destinies and say under your watch this family must not die under your watch this must not die then a time comes when he measures a thousand cubits and he can trust you with his program now he can send you to regions and reveal to you what he wants to do here i am in your presence do it's to me what you want i'm open before you Lord do to me what you want listen ladies and gentlemen my assignment is to continue to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you see that there are vast dimensions as far as the work of the believer is concerned that Christianity is not just limited to having things and enjoying things and saying, no, oh, this is working for me. There are superior needs that even God has. The need to see the world evangelization. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. And you do not have to be a pastor. I have told you, prophetically speaking, God's end time program is separated into three groups. There are prophetic intercessors. Then there are those who are sent into the cosmos. Then there are the kingdom financiers. This is the tripartite formation of the end time army. And every one of us here will play one, two, or all of these roles. I repeat again, prophetic intercessors. These are people like Anna the prophetess. You may never see them out, but they are the ones who pray the program of God to come. Listen carefully. And then number two, we now have those who are sent into Abarakata. I just sense a strong anointing. Very strong anointing. As I just began to talk about this very strong anointing. Those who are sent. That includes pastors, apostles, those who go. That includes entrepreneurs. Please do listen to my message, Redefining Revival. I have said that the revival that is coming is not about the pulpit alone. Because when you read the Bible, it was not only Elijah that walked. There was Daniel. There was Deborah. And all these mantles will find expression in this army. So it's important. If you are Esther, don't go and take Elijah's training. It will corrupt what you will become. You must know, you must find your parallel in scripture and then follow the training that leads you. If you are Esther and you do Elijah's training, you will abort your mission in the palace. And if you are Elijah and you now do the training of say Gideon, no, you identify the kind of training by the similitude of the mantle that is following you. So if you are Esther, start looking for Haggai and Mordecai these are the two people that can make you become the Esther that marries Ahasuerus if you are Elisha make sure you do not make a mistake of looking for Haggai he cannot train Elijah he can only train Esther the challenge is that many of us are going through different patterns of training that does not suit what we are to become So, prophetic intercessors, that was a digression. Those who are sent into the mission field. And then, kingdom financiers. The Josephs of Arimathea's. The body of Jesus is hanging upon the tree. And no every the prayer warriors ministry, Anna the prophetess had finished. The ministry of the disciples and the women had finished. It was only the ministry of the kingdom financier who had influence and had a virgin tongue. Joseph had influence with the 
government of the day and he had a virgin tomb if jesus were not buried in the tomb we would never be able to say oh grave where is your sting and oh oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory he had to be buried in the tomb if we have only prophetic intercessors the program of god cannot happen fully if we have only people going to the mission field this was the mistake that missionaries did when they came into nigeria most of them did not have proper prophetic there was no rich bank of prayer and intercession and they just came with sincere evangelical zeal and some of them as soon as they they landed certain lands they did were not even given an opportunity to preach they slaughtered them and they destroyed them because before their arrival by divination the powers that be had seen their coming and because they did not have capacity they brought a sincere gospel but they neglected the formation even Jesus before his arrival prayer had to go before him learn this pattern you can use it for this is true even for any church the ministry of prayer the ministry of doctrine the word and administration and leadership then the ministry of kingdom financing every time this tripart this tripartite pattern is compromised there will be problem in that organization there will be problem in that ministry so if you have people who only pray in a ministry they will never grow because the ministry of doctrine that matures believers is not there you see that now and then if you have a ministry that does not have support systems errands and horse that hold the hand of the man of God they cannot hold the rod but they can hold the hand of the one holding the rod is someone learning so my first admonishment in training you is that you must develop a systematized prayer life it is it is your assignment under god to study different models in scripture different models through modern history there are prayer giants who have joined the cloud of witnesses men like ew kenyon em bounds you can study their their, their approach to prayer and then there are those that God has granted privilege we who are now alive and are making a contribution you can study the Bible says to follow them there are always them who through faith and patience have obtained the disciples said we are not just following Jesus for his crusade we want to follow him to that secret place and see what really happens that produces the miracles at the crusade ground the secret of great men is in what they do before the manifestations not the manifestations no. number two the second thoughts that i want to share with you in receiving training tonight is how to be built by the word let's do that very quickly so a systematized prayer life a methodical prayer life where you allocate time or a range of times and as much as possible obtain grace and be disciplined to not compromise on those times and you will watch how your life begins to grow every time you invest in prayer something happens within your spirit man now the ministry of the word how to be built by the word let me tell you this there there are three dimensions as far as being built by the word is concerned just because you have access to the word does not mean it will build you no there are many people who are reading scriptures there are many people who have access to the word but they do not know how to be built by it in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 the bible says and now brethren it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it first builds you then it gives to you are we together in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 still the early church when there was problem between the grecian women over tables the apostle said get 12 people and would we'll ordain them and allow them to handle the matters of welfare but we will give ourselves continually the bible says to 
prayer and to the ministry of the word we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word i have found out listen and by the grace of god i have studied my bible and i have studied i i like to study many of the generals who have joined the cloud of witnesses for some reason i have come to a point to trust the purity of their experiences because they produce dramatic levels of results from their spiritual experiences and i've been able to distill three dimensions of your encounter with the word of god in order to build you number one is the study of scripture you want to be built by the word you must study scripture the bible says study to show yourself approved unto god it didn't say wish it didn't say read it says study there is a difference between study and reading the purpose of reading is awareness the purpose of study is understanding there is a difference it will take more than awareness of scripture to be a giant in the spirit you must study scripture so that is the first way to be built by the word you must study scripture number two you must listen to scripture they are not the same the study of scripture and listening to scripture are not the same let me tell you according to the bible the work of the believer is dependent on your eyes and your ears and your mouth there are components in a believer that must participate in your growth many times you will hear the bible say faith comes by hearing it was not a mistake he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches if your ears are not participating in your word encounter i submit to you you cannot be built by the word please try to believe that i'm not deceiving you there are many people who study scripture but they are still not able to be built by the word holistically because they have ignored it i hope you know that before the study of scripture became a possibility it was first hearing holy men wrote before they wrote they had and they saw to write are we together now that model has not changed jesus spent time speaking to them in fact in the parable of the sower watch this the bible lists four kinds of soils and it says the seed is the word of god it says the seed that fell on good ground are those that heard the word they heard the word they received it they acted upon it and even though they had it they still produced three levels of results 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold if you are together if we are together say amen you must study scripture if you want to be built by the word number two you must listen listen to scripture and scripture related resources like teachings scripture and scripture related resources I have in my phone here um, an mp3 of everything Jesus said in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation everything the Bible records that Jesus said was distilled and sometimes that's all I listen to I want to hear the very words that the Bible says from Jesus and something happens miraculously it happens to your spirit man listen this is one of the ways that God trained us when we began with God listening those days people would put their cassette it was it was a model many people have compromised on it now you would almost see believers like mad people because once they were moving they, they always had their earphones listening to something a worship to usher you very strong worship and then maybe a message and then maybe a teaching you would almost know that this is a believers room because there will be a sermon playing while they are cooking a sermon play now we have ignored the place of hearing and that's the reason why the faith dimension it takes to walk mighty things is no longer there I submit to you you just hear the word allow it sink into your mind you don't just hear for memory you hear to transport it into your subconscious mind are we together yes hearing sometimes you can fall asleep while you are hearing 
and in the realm of the spirit the hearing continues and your consciousness is being trained now when you wake up you can be having a vision while you are awake and understand the dynamics because something was quickened in your spirit if you can be sleeping and yet still participate how much more when you are awake now God can speak to you as a preacher you can be standing here and you can be caught up in the spirit and your organs of interacting with that realm of possibility has been trained by hearing have you listened to a message before and then you fall asleep and the message is still playing and sometimes it now becomes graphic you are now acting out that message you may wake up under an intense manifestation of God's power I remember those days we, I used to listen to the entire 12 hour CDs of Charles and Francis Hunter how to heal the sick I would sleep and I would it would play again and again and again you put it on repeat until the battery runs down. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. At age 12, he went to the temple. He was asking questions and listening. And when Satan came to him at age 30, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. There's a man called Dr. Nasir Sadiqi. Many of you may have heard about him and he had a, a case, I think it's called shingles or so, years ago and he was diagnosed with an acute case. It was a terrible case, had brought out boils and swellings in his body and he was left for dead. They had told him, the doctors had concluded, do your best, it may not work and he made up his mind as a project with his wife that he was going to listen to scripture as he was taking drugs. The same way they say take um, Panadol, you know, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. That was how he was listening to scriptures for two years non-stop. And that devil dried up and left him till today. He's still serving the purposes of God. You see, I told you that results are preachers. There is a sermon only results can preach. And when you see people who have gone through the valley of the shadow of death and have come out victorious, it is arrogance to argue with them. Are we together? I know what the word of God can do to a man. I give you this as a project. Submit yourself to hearing scripture. Gather relevant teachings. Gather relevant materials. Especially the Bible on tape or MP3. It's free. It's online. Go and get it. And you listen to it. It may not be easy for you to read the 66 books. But you can hear the 66 books. You can hear a chapter in 20 minutes and repeat it again. In one hour, you have had that chapter. You will think nothing is happening until the day adversity strikes. Scriptures will shoot out of you like weapons. It's true. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Most people are not built by the word because number one, we do not study the word. Number two, we do not listen to the word and then number three we do not speak the word that is the third level of being built by the word the confession of the believer according to scripture is a very powerful thing the confession of a believer the confession of a believer listen ladies and gentlemen you have to learn this the confession of the believer the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so is that in your bible let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed let the healed of the lord say so many people are not given to the confession of scripture and if you do not confess scripture let me tell you the truth there are many prophetic realities that may never happen in your life. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. And then part of asking is not just to say, give me your faith declarations. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? In the name of Jesus, the Lord is the strength of my life. I declare that a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and I behold the reward of the wicked. Are we together? 
the declaration of scripture I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord the blessing of the Lord is at work in my life I decree and declare I am like my own Zion that cannot be shaken but I abide forever do not make anybody make you believe that is just childish Christianity many have negated this to the detriment of their life confession is so powerful Jesus calls himself the word the logos of God And I will not be silent, I will always. Listen, I want you to make it a culture to not just pray, but know how the saints are built by the word. I will repeat it for you one more time. The study of scripture, the hearing of scripture and word related resources and then number three my goodness my god the speaking of the word like the king that you are he says where the word of a king is there is power in the name of jesus there is no death and dryness around my life i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit i am a burning and a shining light i go ever brighter even unto the perfect day you are putting your towel to go and bath you may not have had the time to study scripture listen if you are not growing in scripture it means you are lazy because at any given point you can do one of these three if you don't have the time to study you can have the time to hear if you don't have the time to hear you can have the time to speak there is no excuse to not be built by the word most people do not understand this tripartite approach that is the reason why they say I don't have time to study scripture so my word life goes down It's a lie all three should work together don't choose one don't say me I just confess uh -uh. you must study to have understanding you must hear to build your faith you must speak to release your faith to create those possibilities this is what the Bible teaches this is what the fathers did I remember those days I used to read T.L. Osborne's book and you want to get his book on soul winning and healing the sick a, a timeless eternal classic there is a group of, of uh, I think groups of faith confessions that he wrote just joining scriptures to scripture are we together the favor of the Lord is upon me in the name of Jesus Christ Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my their, my rising koinonia goes from glory to glory no decline for the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light the realm of the spirit is bearing witness to your responsibility of confession someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to make faith declarations even if it's only one scripture you have make that declaration in the name of Jesus when men say there is a casting down I declare that for me there will be a lifting up is someone praying the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures the Bible says he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness, even for his name's sake. Someone is praying. Make that declaration. It's a faith declaration. You are making that declaration by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shanda brakate fareto skia tapalados krata baka fraska di la parus gesevrende gebereto siata e krata barato skia talekato siate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. I think that should be Isaiah eight twenty. Give it to us. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. I want us to read it together. Isaiah chapter eight and verse twenty everybody please read one to read to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them 
that means there is a way you speak as proof that light has entered you that if we find you speaking not according to this word the diagnosis is that there is no light in you that means those who are the light there is a way you speak not just a way you study I will never speak anything negative about my life I don't care what the situation is in the name of Jesus I know while I look at the things that are I look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen the Bible says the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are unseen are eternal do you believe this walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I am favored that I am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I am favored I am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I am this is what I believe before Jesus died he confessed that he would die and he would come back to life if he did not speak he would have been surprised he would remain in that grave it was that word that guaranteed his coming back what have you said about your destiny you have empowered the forces of darkness because even satan depends on the word of god to operate satan has to hear what god has said to know what to do to believers again i declare I shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord in the name of jesus my hands are blessed my life is a compendium of infinite possibilities in the name of jesus this ministry goes from glory to glory serving the purposes of the kingdom in power and in grace prosperity is my portion the favor of god is at work in me i decree and i declare by the power of the holy ghost i'm walking upon that moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favor I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish, every other thing failed. It was his words that brought him out. In the belly of the fish, no hope. Jonah said, every other thing, I, I can't use my hand to fight the fish. I can't use my brain to think my way out. The only thing available that can bring me out is my speaking. And that fish vomited him. And the Bible said it was God that caused the fish to swallow him. And Jonah used his word and came out of that situation. To the point that Jesus used the testimony of Jonah as an adumbration of his death that means the same way it was the word that brought Jonah out Jesus made a declaration before he entered the belly of the earth and after three days he rose again the angels did not come because they wanted to come the angels are only mandated to respond to the word of God if there was no word in that equation the angels would not have a ministry can I tell you many people talk about angels you don't tell angels go and walk that's not how you instruct them you, the, the ministry of the angels is activated by speaking the word the moment the proceeding word comes they have an assignment let me show you something can, can I show you something Revelations 1 verse 1 I'd like us to read it together one to read the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his servants which things must come to pass notice the revelation was what was given and the bible says he sent that revelation and signified it by his angel the angels respond to revelations so as i begin to speak in the name of jesus my tomorrow is great angels like the holy spirit have the power to go into your tomorrow they are not limited by time and space they can go there as ushers doing the bidding of the saints 
I really believe this. When I begin my year, I call every month by name and I give it a name. I prophesy upon it. This week, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy. You are a week that delivers favor. My life is all about the purposes of the kingdom. I go about doing good, healing all day that are oppressed because God is with me. The anointing of the Spirit is at work in me. I believe in God's ability at work in me. You speak like this and watch how inferiority, complex, all of these things that came from our backgrounds, was it not words that programmed you into that state? They told you you would not become anything. They looked at you and said you are stupid. You are the black sheep or whatever kind of sheep. They, they look for a deformity around your life and name you. I like the man called Jabez. The mother used her mouth and programmed danger. Because of her pain, she called him Jabez. But that scripture starts with the end of his story. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. When you cannot use your hand, when you cannot use your brain, when you cannot use your feet, use your mouth. That every other thing can fail. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with, with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Zaria, hear me. Do not call yourself what God did not call you. He did not call you a failure. He did not call you weak. Man of God, he never told you you will fail. Your lowly estate may speak to you, but respond with the spoken word. Don't just study it, speak it. That in the name of Jesus, my generation will celebrate the hand of God upon my life. I may not look like it, but the mighty hand of God is upon me. His word is has work in my spirit. There is no limit to what I'm able to do. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Hallelujah. You do not need money in your bank to speak. You do not need money in your pocket to speak. You do not need a big house to speak. You do not need a mic to speak. You need understanding. Let this become your culture as you are trained. To study the word. To listen to the word. And to speak the word. I give you a guarantee. Obtain grace to live like this. And watch what your life becomes. It will look like you held a charm. The beauty and the glory of God that begins to emanate. You are not the first to stay in one room. We all stay there. You are not the first to whatever it is. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Women who receive their dead back to life. Maybe there's someone outside. Maybe there's someone scattered across, following online across the globe. Can I speak to you? Do not allow anything bring you down. For as long as you are able to speak, let God be true and every man a liar. Do you believe this? This is how to train believers to be masters over life. So next time you see things not going your way, humanly speaking, you may feel that grief and you may lament, but always remember who you are. When you are done with all that lamentation and sympathy, you wear your priestly regalia and you lock up yourself and say, I know better than this. I have been trained. You open your Bible under an intense atmosphere of worship and let that worship be playing while you are studying and the spirit of grace will now unlock the skill. You see, opening the book is your responsibility but unlocking the seal is his responsibility you don't have the power the book must be both opened and the seal unlocked for you to see opening the book is your responsibility but unlocking the seal 
then he will give you one rhema word and with that word you stand up and from the lips of faith you begin to make declarations that don't make sense in the name of Jesus I activate the ministry of my destiny helpers and whilst you are sitting someone who has forgotten you all of a sudden the book of remembrance is open is and it looks like it's just a a coincidence no we program possibilities in our lives based on the word let me give you the last one and then is someone learning no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me Paul said my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you if you submit to the bidding of the spirit you will be surprised to see the kind of glory that will be revealed in you the bible says there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial it says even among the stars one differed from another in glory you may not differ in size but you can define glory that glory that excels till the christ is formed in Till your glory is revealed in me Your wisdom rests on me Your favor at work in me So I submit to your work in me Till Christ be formed in me Number three The third and the final charge for this time that we have to share together is the value of spiritual empowerment. This is the last thing I want to talk about. In our training and our equipping, as we contend to lay hold on eternal life in experience, I have given you three keys that represent irrefutable kingdom secrets. There are ladders that transit men from realms of defeat and weakness that you become a tremendous person of capacity like the mighty men of David. The power of a systemic prayer life. Then how to derive value from the word through your study, your hearing, your speaking. Don't forget this. Then now number three, the value of of spiritual empowerment most people do not know that to fulfill our kingdom assignments and to advance the kingdom in general skill and human abilities can only take us so far when it has to do with advancing the purposes of the kingdom when it has to do with fulfilling your God ordained assignment please have this at the back of your mind that skill and human abilities can only go so far there is a limit to which skill can go there is a limit to which your ability can get to hallelujah this is where the supernatural comes in this is where the value of empowerment comes in Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 very quickly please Luke 24 49 it says and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power the one who is talking to them had given them information revelation but he said that is still not enough you tarry until you are endued with 
power. You need more than a message. You need more than an information. You need power. Most believers have the message, but they do not have the power to back and to validate the speakings they have been given. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, I love this scripture. The Bible says, and with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. When we talk about the power of God, when we talk about the anointing, please understand that this is not an exclusive reserve to preachers pastors apostles prophets and no the reason why pastors apostles and preachers seem to be the ones manifesting the anointing is because they are the ones who have the greatest consciousness of it because of the nature of what they do they are aware that if i do not have the anointing things will not work well but the anointing was never in the in the temple everything was anointed everything your business is value but it must be anointed to prosper supernaturally are we together now yes i have learned from scripture i have learned from history i have learned from fathers and i have learned from experience that your christian experience is only going to be a recycling of pain and embarrassment if you ignore the value of spiritual empowerment please listen carefully you do not have to be a preacher to desire spiritual empowerment you see you cannot produce God's dimension of result using the strength of the flesh God's dimension of results cannot be produced using the strength of the flesh he says by thee I can run through a troop by my God, I can leap over a wall. How do you run through a troop as one man? Ask the mighty men of David. He stood in one position and brought down 800 people with a sword. And the sword refused to leave his hand. Can I tell you, do not downplay what the power of the Holy Spirit can do in the life of ordinary men. We may not seem like much in ourselves. But not after the power comes. Samson, before the arrival of the spirit of might, would act like a normal human being. If Samson was macho, Delilah would not ask him the source of his strength. He was a mysterious man. When that power would come upon him, he would remove a city gate and climb a mountain with it and sit there. How about Elijah, who ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel? The Bible is full of mighty men, Gideon and his 300 men. Jesus recommended the, the, the endowment with power to the disciples who would later become apostles. And he said, Tarry. If Jesus tells people who he mentored, Tarry, I know that I taught you, but you'll be surprised if you just be on your way going, you will return back with sad testimonies. Tarry. I have taught you and everything I've taught you is true but tarry until you are endued with power and then the Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come I'm not sure they knew what they were expecting they just got up that morning wondering wow Pentecost so this Jesus will keep us waiting here we're not going to go and celebrate this feast It's day 50 now suddenly suddenly the Bible says there was a a a mighty rushing wind a sound from heaven will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory Cover us with your wings upon that weak person. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. 
upon that dying family. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with glory. Do you know? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible says the earth was dark and void. Watch the Spirit of God, the custodian of the power of the Godhead. The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. Darkness, tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says, but the Spirit hovered round the face of the waters. Now that power was available, and God said, and he saw that what he said was good. And God said, and he saw that what he said was good. The ultimate test of spiritual power is found in verse 2 down to 4. When you say and you see and it appears and it is good, you have power. The zenith of spiritual power is the ability to declare when the centurion came to Jesus and Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. He said, no, I may not know much, but by reason of my military experience, I know this much. I am a ruler under the Roman government. And I say to one, go, and he can go. And to one, come, and he can come. I know you are under the authority of the government of heaven. Speak the word only. And he said, I've not found such faith. In other words, who taught you this? Who taught you that this is how the administration of power works in the kingdom? That from one location you can stand. One location you can speak to your house. One location you can speak to your family. One location from one location elijah did not need to go to a radio station from one location there shall be no rain over a period of three and a half years listen to me ministry is going to be frustrating if you do not value spiritual empowerment can i tell you the truth it takes power to be wealthy it's called the power to get wealth not just the common sense to get wealth it takes more than a right mind to be blessed and the bible says strong men retain wealth because retaining wealth is more serious than getting it the easiest part of being wealthy is getting it retaining wealth is proof of power it says strong men retain wealth it takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness over your family that want to come and destroy everybody you've heard people they, they would say ah, our father was a pastor and he died without achieving anything say unto God how terrible art thou in your ways he says through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves are we together a man woke up one morning and just felt a slight pain very slight pain just like a needle pain around his legs and he just smiled it over and said what is this this pain and by the next time he would sit down he could not stand up straight again this is a true story and his um what they call this thing the kneecap started shaking and vibrating on his own i'm not a doctor i don't know what that meant and he called for help and all of a sudden they started diagnosing this man and they started bringing all kinds of things that from a medical standpoint i was told should take a long time before it degenerates to that state and it happened within a short time because it was sponsored by the presence of his spirit jesus said ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound these 18 years can i tell you sincerely ladies and gentlemen in this end time hear me if there is no manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom in and through your life the nations will not place a demand on your grace i can tell you that there is a growing hunger across the earth to see the power and the glory of god displayed once again and power takes more than falling down and standing up the ability to correct the ability to create 
to establish things in the lives of people Isaiah 61 we're ready to pray the Spirit of the Lord is upon me the Bible says because the Lord had anointed me the word anointed there is to legitimize to ordain to preach good tidings to the meek listen carefully he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted all by the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives all by the anointing and the opening of prison to them that are bound all by the anointing verse 2 it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn still by the anointing to appoint unto them I like this one you know what it means to appoint to name the day of their deliverance and victory to appoint unto them that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes I was teaching in Lagos and I told them beauty is a gift you can give a man beauty that you look at a life that has been battered and shredded into pieces and you come in the name of the Lord and give the person the gift of beauty rewrite the narrative of their family no job no rising no nothing and you come in the name of the Lord he sent me to your home he says every house that you enter if there be a man of peace and they open the door for you he said let your blessing your peace rest that means no man of God and no saint of God walks empty there is always something that goes with you and when it is received it can rest upon people is someone learning I learned the value of spiritual empowerment and I made up my mind that I was going to contend for it as I read the books of T.L. Osborne Charles and Francis Hunter E.W. Kenyon Papa Hagen Reinhard Bonke name them those we call God's generals and the fathers and those that have set the pace for us that we had an opportunity to see their lives possibilities beyond imagination I watched one of um, what's his name now one of these this 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 healing evangelists I can't remember his name now he's not one of the popular ones and there was a growth on someone's face and he just held it like this and peeled it the same way you peel something like that just removed it ah. may God restore us oh. may God truly restore us because there are dimensions of power that these men accessed in the spirit that we need to pray that the Lord will grant us that grace not for the purpose of self-aggrandizement but that there is a need to validate the speakings of God once again upon this earth are you aware of the kinds of sicknesses it's been a burden in my heart in the last maybe two three months that because God gave I had an encounter and God began to speak to me about the restoration of the healing mantle back to the earth I hope you know mantles do not leave the earth no they are there but there is a level of alignment that the saints must assume these men were people you would read their stories and you would think it's an exaggeration I know I was told that Archbishop Benson either holds of blessed memory they once brought someone for him with a twisted face and to pray for the person and all he did was he told the person look up and when he looked up he said God this man was created in your image if this is how you look leave him like that hmm. don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush these were men who walked like gods upon the earth I remember watching one crusade of Charles and Francis Hunter and they were picking people out of wheelchairs as if they were relocating them to act a film and they were laughing I said look how frustrating this is but a generation will arise some of you you've seen it in your dreams some of you you've seen it in your visions it's time for the things that you have seen to come alive and to be made manifest in your life if, do you know what it means if you carry the healing power imagine your father and your mother think of your loved ones forget about a crusade ground just think of your loved ones someone suffering from prostrate about to die someone suffering from cancer and now you come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you step into that family with the confidence of a trained believer 
holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. You know, many years ago in this area, I've shared the story. I, I think it was a lecturer, I can't remember now, somebody somewhere, and I went to go and pray. He was on a wheelchair. I think something happened, whether a degenerative disc or one of these medical conditions. And now they heard that God was using a gentleman called Joshua Selman. And with every sense of honor and passion, they said, please come. And I went there and they gave me their rapt attention. They gathered the whole family and the children. I preached a powerful message on the power of God. But the problem was that it was now time to demonstrate it. And, and the man on the wheelchair, you know, a man maybe in his 50s or 60s then, you could not say he did not have faith. He was paying attention, nodding and saying amen. And then I laid my hands on him. In the name of Jesus, this same Jesus that I've preached, sir, rise up. In the name of Jesus, absolutely nothing happened. Absolutely. I prayed, I prayed, I believed that I had faith. If it fails, it is never God. I took responsibility and went back. There is something I do not know. Let God be true and all men liars. I'm showing you the attitude of a winner. By the time you just say, after all, I'm not God. You will never be able to walk in certain levels of the anointing. You must shrug off the shame and go back. Open my eyes. There has to be something. The mortuary in Shika there. I have entered that mortuary to pray for a dead body. The anatomy lab in Ebiu Zaria have been left in that lab to pray for a dead body. And while I prayed, none of them came back to life but i was happy i did because you never live the same there is something about your fear leave letting it out what is making you afraid there is a way you will stand and stare at it you will find out it didn't have the power it claimed to have please listen carefully we're wrapping up I remember praying, fasting, and crying and say, Lord, I listened to John A.A. A. Allen and A.A. A. Allen said he went to the Lord and prayed and cried and said, what is the secret of the miracle working power of God? Because he read his Bible and when he read it, he tried to practicalize what he read and absolutely nothing happened. And you see, in the world that we live today, people are already enlightened. It's not like before. You can go somewhere and tell people Jesus can move and he doesn't touch them. The next thing you see, he caught someone. And somebody will say, you, you abuse them emotionally by lying to them. <laughs> Church, there's no time to play games again. We have to stay with God and hold on to the four horns of the altar until we carry substance, the substance of genuine, provable spiritual power. Hallelujah. I remember it was in this same Zaria then phones just started mobile phones as we know and then they, they started um, it was a night call or something like that when they called me and they told me that someone they were waiting for a doctor to come I don't know if it was Shika now or Barodiko one of the medical um, places and the person had had a, they mentioned the vertebra, the ones that were crushed or something. So they were waiting for someone, either someone to come from India or something of that sort. And they said, there is this gentleman again. I made up my mind. Please, I failed and failed till my ego died. In the year that King Uzziah died, there is something that must die for you to see. For as long as your purpose of ministering the anointing is to prove a point, you carry your ego and it blocks the power of God something must die i got to a point where i said if nobody gets healed i will keep praying for people my ego was stung and stung till there was nothing if you're on the ground there's nowhere to fall again usually that is the point you see his power because now the excellency of power will be of god i remember now looking from today i do not know i can't tell if i really i don't know what kind of 
faith and courage would have entered me. True story. I picked the phone and this, I think it was a woman, I remember. She was wearing a, a neck collar and it was a complicated situation. And I remember holding the phone, it was in the night. I said, Madam, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. And I boldly told her, after all, I said it many times and it failed. I said, I will keep saying it while I learn. I didn't know that that day would be different. Five minutes to your lifting, it will still not look like it. You just continue. I held that phone and I told her, I said, I'm going to pray for you. I prayed a simple prayer, no sermon, no long stories, a simple prayer. And I told her, remove your neck. And this woman removed her neck collar. And the only thing I remember hearing was that she ran and shouted, Jesus. And that was it. By the next day, you know how they come to people's homes, like burial. Burial has happened. That was how people, if I did not see the x-ray, the son had to come. The father, the husband now of the woman, when he heard his wife was healed. These are not unverified stories. He did not believe it's impossible until he came and saw his wife. They brought me the x-ray before, after. I said, that's right. Truly, spiritual power works. Let me tell you this. I remember that time when that news broke out in Shika here. The number of nurses and doctors that began to call. Please, I have a pain here. I've not shared it with anybody. So I now found out people have problems, but they will hide it for as long as they suspect you will waste their time. The day they find what looks like genuine answer, they will open up their scars sincerely. The reason why it looks like men are not placing a demand upon your grace is nobody wants to open the deepest secrets of their pain when they know you will not solve it. That's why a patient can go to a doctor and somebody old enough to be that doctor's father you will still pull for surgery you will still and you will not be ashamed because you know the doctor will take care of you if they say turn around let them inject you you will not say i'm embarrassed i'm a woman you're a man that is none of the doctor's business you want to be healed of malaria you do what he's asking you to do the reason why people cover up and don't speak is because it looks like in the church it, it, they, are, they are tired of just saying amen without power but the good news is that he's restoring again. God himself is restoring ancient mantles and is restoring genuine spiritual power. How will we go to the nations of the earth and preach Jesus to a bedeviled world that has several options? No. The Bible says Philip preached Christ in Samaria, Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. It says the people gave heed in one accord, with one accord, hearing and seeing, verse 6, the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing. In the kingdom, we hear and we see. We do not just hear, we see. I made up my mind that for as long as I am alive, and Koinonia, hear me, for as long as you are part of this apostolic and prophetic ministry, it will take more than revelation. You must contend for this third dimension, the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is not for Joshua Selman. This promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, even as many as are far off, those that the Lord will call. When it has to do with the power of the Holy Ghost, great grace was upon them all. It's time to start going to your families. It's time to go to your, maybe your, your rooms, your offices, and now begin to manifest as light and salt indeed. This talk, we keep talking and shouting amen for nothing must come to an end. Can I tell you the truth? Everybody you see that God used mightily in Zaria, for those of you who just came to Zaria not long ago, the heritage that you celebrate in Zaria came about by the stories that you are hearing. Different stories from different men of God at points of encounters and the corresponding power that came upon their lives. My prayer is that Zaria will not stop remaining a training ground. This is a place where people came as ordinary people. I remember those days you will see tiny ladies in the cold. They will wear their stockings and carry their rechargeable in the night on their way to long tennis courts. Then most people will not know it now. But you will see them with their tiny voices for hours praying in the spirit. 
Later on, you find out that that tiny girl has now become a campus fellowship president. Fire like you will see somebody looking so small, but you sit under that kind of anointing. The service will finish, you will not even know. There is a generation that is losing out on the patterns, celebrating all kinds of things. It's not by going online, it's not by doing all of these things. You must stay the ministry of prayer. Many years ago in Zaria, night time was a time of small recreation that graduates into prayer. People gathered together and the gist was still spiritual talk. It was not just like it was nonsense. You start talking, sharing things, questions, and from there, before you know it, people get into the zone of prayer. That is how the mighty were made. Precious people do not lose that pattern. You lose that pattern you will see the darkness and onslaught you see all this armed robbery and kidnapping that is happening in zaria do not sit helpless as if you can do nothing you do not know that the people who do these things negotiate with the spirit to embolden them to come out and manifest nobody unassisted has that kind of courage to watch another human being and kill the person no until the saints rise and begin to define the realities that happen within your spiritual borders in the name of Jesus for darkness that thus far have you come no further shall you come shall you go I remember times when we had to stay and pray certain things out of this region you would hear crisis happening around Kaduna state and the rest and while we're interceding for that one to stop we will stand and declare that it shall not be he says I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower now the challenge is that many people are only praying one over three will not get the job done you see where the mistake is because it is the excellency of the word in you that helps you to pray effectively now many people ignore the word they ignore the power of the Holy Spirit and all people do is to pray and it is largely praying amiss a dissipation of intense spiritual energy but very little result there must be this tripartite balance Is someone understanding this? He's brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. The Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness. Hear me, before students get admission, whether to ABU or the Polytechnic, anywhere, we used to pray in advance before they arrive. We begin to pray and intercede. Father, they are coming from several families. They are welcome, regardless whether it's from a family of idolatry. You send them here. Some of them, as soon as they land, from day one, they step into a church having a program just to stroll not knowing that prayer had been put to direct them and some of those people later became fellowship presidents some of them today are men and women of God serving the purposes of God but it is not just limited to producing pastors there were people who it was the church that showed them their direction today they are entrepreneurs advancing the kingdom in many regards they came from a family of low self-esteem came from villages of all sorts but when they sat down under a teaching priest line upon line a sound exegesis of scripture they now began to understand who they were in Christ and the possibilities that would come by reason of this way life and things began to change never lose that pattern if you're a campus fellowship president here hear me whilst you study and do what you do remember that you have an assignment do not leave this region without replacing yourself. No. Otherwise, the devil will be patient and allow a group of vibrant, serious people to leave. And then you will find out that all that is left is nothing to write home about spiritually. This is what you see happening in many circles. Vibrant people, but there is no succession. No raising men and women of fire. It is the reason why you see us continue to invest in training 
because for as long as Jesus lives this place will remain a training ground where God is raising people you see these are little children some of them were dedicated right here and now you see them as small as they are while we are praying they are joining to pray too watch what happens to them by the time they become teenagers they will be light years they would outdo the things the little that we have done and that's how it's supposed to be let me charge you before we pray finally parents you have a role to play in preserving this revival young people you have a role to play in preserving this revival ministers of the gospel we have a role to play businessmen we have a role to play this is a time where everybody must put his hands on deck from Zaria and around Zaria to the ends of the earth Jesus must be revealed and Jesus must be glorified. We will never allow darkness to prevail. We will never allow decadence, kidnapping, assassination. Right now, people cannot go home freely in the night again. What kind of thing is that? Because some teenager somewhere under the influence of a wicked demonic spirit. Let's submit our prayer request. And then we'll do the impartation. We've taken time. Please begin to pray in the spirit right where you are and submit your prayer request to the person at the left or the right aisle seated to you. Any one of them, preferably maybe the left. Please submit your prayer request while you pray. All the overflows, those outside, those across. Please make sure you attend to those who are around Second Equa. Make sure that they are given an opportunity to submit their request submit your request while you pray the bible says to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. Oh Lord, will you put my life in order for you, for you. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your way Oh Lord Set my heart on fire for you For you Oh Lord Set my life in honor for you I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your ways. Just one prayer request. Father, I am available to be used mightily by you. I pray that you will use me like never before. Open your mouth and pray. Whether in ministry, whether as a lecturer, whether as a student, whether as a husband, a wife, a father, a son, a daughter, a career person, a professional, open your mouth and pray. I am available. I am available. I am available in the name of Jesus. I am available by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am available. As you raise mighty men and women, as you anoint men for this end time kingdom assignments, I am available. Find a vessel in me in the name of Jesus Christ. Now pray and declare, I obtain grace to be prayerful. I obtain grace to be systemic even in my prayer. I obtain grace to be a student of scripture. Are you praying? I obtain grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
to listen to scripture to listen to teachings i obtain grace to speak the word faith declarations that speak and program possibilities over my life declare the power of the holy ghost upon my life the power of the holy ghost upon my ministry the power of the holy ghost upon my family the power of the holy ghost upon my body the power of the holy ghost upon my children is someone praying the power of the holy ghost upon my academics the power of the holy ghost upon my career in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it is not by power not by might it is by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah so this is how it works when the power of the holy spirit comes upon you the bible says christ is revealed as the wisdom of god and it is revealed is revealed as the power of god when the anointing comes upon you it can translate to wisdom guiding you to know what to do and it can translate to the force that corrects every anomaly in your life hallelujah our time is gone we're going to spend just about maybe five minutes max ten by the grace of God I like you when you're ready with the request please bring them and then I will speak over your life I promised yesterday that I was going to pray for the sick we may not have time to take testimonies unfortunately because of our time but I will speak over your life then I'll pray over the request we'll do the final impartation and then we're done but hear me ladies and gentlemen if there is anything about this life that you are seeing I'm a product of God's grace but it is also because I place value on the power of God the ministry of strategic prayer being built by the word and then embracing the engracing the ever increasing empowerment of the spirit because you see yesterday's excellence will be tomorrow's mediocrity just because you received fire yesterday does not mean it will suffice for the rest of your life some of you you are here you came for this meeting yesterday and today weary dried up in your spirit but the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful ground vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest There is no limit to what the Holy Spirit is able to do. I see several of you just standing across as far as you can get. Wherever you are, I want you to release your faith as I pray. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Truly you will be changed His glory will be revealed When the Spirit takes over your soul I'd like you to stretch your hands towards this request as we pray this is the most accurate representation of the needs of everyone Jesus said it is the sick that need the doctor some of these needs here represented are life-threatening issues some of these issues represented here are issues of shame and embarrassment I like you to declare these that I see these Egyptians I see them no more forever I'm going to bow my knees to pray you don't kneel you just pray just for two minutes to lay my hands upon them everybody whether you are outside you are falling from across the globe stretch your hands and begin to pray pray in the spirit and decree and declare
Jesus father the Bible says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of Jesus I bow my knees in partnership with all the graces here represented and we declare under this corporate anointing that every request that has been placed before the Lord here let it become your testimonies now shout a louder amen let it become your testimonies now in the name of Jesus every life-threatening situation here I decree and declare you become a testimony now every spirit that is back of the tragedies here represented by the blood of the eternal covenant we curse you and we declare a release for God's people and finally in the name of Jesus prophetically I stand upon this request every challenge that has risen above you we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly everywhere inside or outside I want you to place your hand if you came here sick or you brought someone sick lay your hands we're out of time but I have to do this lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone it doesn't have to be for yourself there's someone that comes to mind you can stand in to receive from them for them the centurion stood for his son Jarius stood for his daughter I sent my word and it healed your disease I am the Lord, your healer. Place your hand there. I want to pray for you. He gave us the power and the authority to declare upon the sick and that they be healed. Now in the name of Jesus, every spirit and every devil of infirmity that has plagued families plagued destinies in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the eternal covenant I command that that spirit leaves your body now I command that that spirit leaves your body now now I declare to you in the name of Jesus be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now my god there's such a strong healing anointing be healed now eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be open now bone conditions in the name of jesus be corrected now blood conditions genotype issues all kinds of blood conditions be healed now be healed now fibroids and all kinds of malignant growths in the name of Jesus be healed now we command that those growths die and dissolve from your bodies in the name of Jesus Christ cancer and any cancer related case we command that cancer cell to die now every genotype you desire change I declare that it changes supernaturally now back pain severe back pain let it be healed right now there's someone you have very severe pain one of your molars in fact it's, it's almost like you have it's a cavity problem but it's it's an advanced state there's severe pain you can literally choke something in there in the name of Jesus let that teeth be supernaturally filled now there is there is a man here 
your situation this is something that that relates to men and this thing has affected you and affected your marriage I declare in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural restoration for you now supernatural restoration now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me someone who is suffering from pile pile very painful pile sometimes you are not able to go to the toilet in the name of Jesus be healed right now and anyone here appointed unto death we declare and declare that your life is lengthened by the Spirit of God every ailment whether every ailment whether I mentioned it or not be healed from it now be healed from it in the name of Jesus and for all those you are standing in for I declare that the power of God touches them right where they are in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus every door that has been closed over you I command that door to be opened now God has declared unto us that this is our year of open doors I declare doors be open now in the name of Jesus for those who are students I prophesy upon you extraordinary intelligence by the Spirit extraordinary intelligence by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and for anyone here who has been going through patterns and circles of demonic activities witchcraft and all kinds of satanic manipulations you are hereby delivered forever you are hereby delivered forever you are hereby delivered forever in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over Zaria the reign of wickedness witchcraft the activities of evil people let it come to an end right now we make decrees this is by the decree of the watchers by the power of the Holy Ghost this environment becomes unconducive for any satanic activity in the name of Jesus we pray for all the churches that are represented here in Zaria every church represented let there be fresh fire upon the altars in the name of Jesus Christ Zaria remains a place of salvation remains a place of training remains a place of revival in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over your finances by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace called favor rest upon you 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 in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. now the final impartation I want to pray for you you don't have to bring anyone out if anyone is under the anointing just guide them we don't have that time now but I want to pray there will always be people who are called to take there are many empty positions in the spirit in Zaria because many people have moved and some of those positions are crying for men and women who will stand and continue what is being done you see the days of superstar Christianity of one person trying to is over the Lord is raising us many not just one person you know and all of that because if only a few people are there they stand the risk of suffering pride and temptation and once they fall out of the way that's the end of it when God raises many people it is beneficial even for those who are there because it takes away the tendency to be tempted with pride and to believe I'm the only one hallelujah there are many people who are rising from the campuses to the various churches I just want to release this grace upon you and it will rest upon you because for some of you this grace will quicken you into a place of retreat for some of you this grace will quicken you to a place of prayer some of you this grace will come to activate many possibilities right now in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Spirit inside 
all the overflows overflow three two one the extension at the count of three i decree and declare the grace and the mantle that is required for this season in the name of jesus christ receive it right now one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now i activate that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication receive it right now receive it right now the mantle of a prayer warrior the grace to pray and pray down revival receive it in the name of jesus christ the spirit of revelation access to light from scripture i release that anointing upon you right now in the name of jesus christ i stir up the prophetic and the apostolic every dormant grace the eyes that see and the ears that hear may that grace be quickened from within you now i decree and declare kingdom financiers rising with the dignity of kingdom integrity received a pakatos kata break it as kote pata i release that grace zaria you shall not lack may god raise men with the dignity of kingdom integrity that will supply resources for kingdom advance in the name of jesus christ i pray concerning the worshipers those called into the ministry of psalmistry prophetic psalmistry whether you are inside or outside i stir up that grace after the order of david receive that mantle now receive that songs of the spirit songs of the spirit receive it in the name of jesus I pray for all those who are being raised by God to be the next lecturers the next career people in the name of Jesus let the spirit of excellence rest upon you let the spirit of excellence rest upon you let the spirit of excellence rest upon you in the name of Jesus let the spirit of excellence rest upon you There are some of you here by age 30 you are already professors in the name of jesus such a display of unusual excellence a level of mental acumen as has never been seen i pray for every family here represented let no family in zaria let no family here represented lack a priest that can rise in that family in the name of jesus christ and hear me if there is any of your loved one who is not saved whether your brother whether your sister whether your spouse whether your child whether your parents we agree right now as the church of the lord jesus christ beginning from tonight may the spirit of god begin to convict them even unto salvation convict them even unto righteousness in the name of jesus christ finally the spirit of bloodshed the spirit of untimely death over and around this region parakatos katibalata in the name of jesus christ we declare that that reproach is rolled over zaria rolled over the body of christ for in jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah now listen very carefully there are thousands of people scattered across this place and thousands others falling online i want you to lend me your attention this is my last night with you for now and i want to make an altar call you know what an altar call is an altar call is a moment of genuine surrender and reception of the life of jesus please no movement minimize movement inside and all the overflows you've been here and whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to convict you that you are that champion that god is raising that you are that person that god wants to greatly use but you see 
everything in this kingdom starts with God Jesus is the way I told you earlier on there are some of you who have never truly surrendered your heart in truth you have not made that determined decision to begin a walk with God or there are those who for whatever reason your life has gone haywire and you want to rededicate your life in this auditorium and all the overflows listen to me the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart Jesus Christ is giving you an opportunity to make it right I'm going to count one to five like I did yesterday all those who are within this auditorium who are saying apostle I want to make it right with Jesus and in truth I'm going to be inviting you to come and stand here and then if the space is still available maybe a few more from outside who are coming can stand once this space is filled up you may move to your LED your various LED screens now for those who are scattered down to second equa you may want to take advantage of overflow 2 or overflow 3 or overflow 4 you can use any one of them but I'm going to count 1 to 5 leave your seat wherever you are and come and stand to make it right with Jesus I begin my counting now one celebrate them as they come make sure you don't sit back when the Holy Ghost is speaking to you come he's able to give you a new life hallelujah let's celebrate them they are coming from everywhere outside inside Nina is Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Baya, Nina, yes, Ne, Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Baya, Nasa, Hano, Akan, Kaken, no, Bazankoma. I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back, some, some. Nina, yes, ne, bazan, ko, ba, bazan, ko, ba, ba, ya, ba. Thank you so much for making this noble decision. It's the wisest decision any man can make under the sun. Hallelujah. Please, ushers, help those who are outside to move right to the LED screens and let your attention be on the screens as I lead you to pray. It is a marvelous thing to see souls come to Jesus. Nothing compares to it. No kind of miracle compares to the miracle of a saved life by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given unto man by which we must be saved. That whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord that person shall be saved thank you very much for making this noble decision ladies and gentlemen the Bible says whoever will come to Jesus young old rich poor that he will in no wise cast away the front is filled up please the remaining people can now join those in front if he's filled up they can take advantage of any of the overflows praise the name of the Lord thank you very much May I request all who have come out indicating the desire for salvation, please lift your right hand high above your head, your right hand everywhere. And for those who are following, whether you are following from the US, from Europe, from Africa, some state in Nigeria, in the silence of your room, your living room, probably you are watching by way of rebroadcast. This is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. As I lead them to pray, I want you to repeat that prayer not just as a poem or a chant but a declaration of faith and the Bible declares that salvation will be administered to you say this after me say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever 
I am a child of God. I walk in the newness of life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones. By the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, the life of God is ministered to you right now. The power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I commend you to the word of God and even to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. Satan has no hold over your life. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And the church say a loud amen. amen. Now very quickly ladies and gentlemen. I want to encourage you to just move to the back. There are counselors waving their hands. There are quite a number of you. You'll just move in concert. They will have a word with you very quickly. And then you'll be back to your seat. Any of the aisles you can use your left or right. Any of them will take you to the same place. May God bless you. Let's honor them. Let's honor them. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.